In order to easily deploy web applications to AWS, you can use their Elastic Beanstalk service. To do that, head to the main AWS Management Console and search for Elastic Beanstalk. Choose it from the list and you'll be taken to that console. If you don't already have any applications deployed, you'll be greeted with a nice welcome message and a blue Get Started button. However, if you use that button, you're actually deploying a sample application and you won't have as much choice around the naming of your application or environments. So instead, let's head up to Create New Application and we'll give our application a name and a description. When you're happy with that, go ahead and click Create. And now you'll see we've technically created an application, but there's nothing to it yet. Think of an application like a container where you can store the guts of your application. And those guts are split out into different environments. So you can create multiple environments and they might be your dev, test, live, and we can go ahead and create one now. So with none already existing, there's a create one now button, but we can also head up to actions and go to create environment. This is also where you'd need to go if you already had an environment configured. So we're going to be deploying a web server environment. So this will include instances that run websites and web applications. The other option there, worker environment, will spin up instances that don't actually have a web server as a part of them. So for instance, on Linux, you won't have Nginx or Apache. So web server is what we need and we'll click select. And now we need to name our environment. So I'm going to call this environment live and I want to set a specific domain for my application. You can leave this blank and it'll auto generate a value, but it looks a bit cleaner if you specify one. Now this has to be unique across the entire region that you're deploying to. And there's a button to check for the availability. So that name's available and we'll go ahead and give this environment a description. And now we need to start configuring the actual platform that our web application runs on. So if you've created any custom platforms, you could select them here. However, you'll note that option's grayed out for me as I don't have any custom platforms. But that's fine as the default.net, which is a Windows based instance option will work for me. Now note the information box there suggesting that we bump our instance size up to T2 medium. This is because the default instance size is actually going to be a little bit under resourced for a standard IIS deployment. However, I've been running into issues with T2 medium instances and my deployments never succeed. So I'm not going to be following this advice, but it's something to consider. Now you can deploy a sample application, but we'll go ahead and upload some code that one of our developers have given us. So I choose upload code and then upload. And if this was already in an S3 bucket, I could specify the URL here, but I've been given a zip file. So I'll go and choose that from my file system. And I'm going to replicate that file name of the zip file, that being ebdemo-v1, etc. And I'll use that as the version label for this application. Now these version labels allow you to easily identify the different instances of your source code that you're using to spin up these environments, allowing you to go back to older versions or run different environments on different versions. We'll go ahead and upload that. And before clicking create environment, we'll go to configure more options. So this is where we can go ahead and change our instance size, the capacity of our environment, etc. So right up the top, there's some configuration presets and this defaults to low cost. So what this means is it's going to deploy one single instance of our web server and it won't be put behind a load balancer. So as you can see, this configuration doesn't have a load balancer and the environment type is single instance. If we change this to high availability, you'll see capacity has been increased from one to four and it's now deploying a load balancer. So that means our web application could now have between one and four, depending on load, web servers spun up within EC2 at any given point in time. If you want to modify any of these, you can click the modify button under the block. So for example, if we did want to change the size of our instances, we can click modify and choose it from the list. As I mentioned, I've been having issues with the T2 medium instance size, which AWS recommended for this base image. So I'm not going to change that today. Instead, I'll scroll down to the bottom and click create environment. And that'll go off and it's going to start spinning up all the resources that we need to support this application. So that will include IP addresses, the load balancer, auto scaling groups, 
and the actual EC2 instances themselves. Note the comment there under the headline creating text snips web demo dash live that this will take a few minutes. In my testing I've been getting deployment times between 10 and 30 minutes so sit back relax and we'll cut back in when our deployment's finished. And we're back with our web app being successfully deployed. We can see the health status is set to green with a nice green check mark. If we head back to our application, we can see our one environment all nicely lit up green. So let's check that we can actually access this application. So we'll go ahead and hit the URL. And as you can see, our demo site's loaded. And it looks like our developer's given us a shameless template website. So I'm not sure if that's what he intended, but um, let's head back to AWS. Oh, so looks like it wasn't what our developer intended and we've got a new version to deploy. So let's have a look at that. We can head into update and deploy when looking at our environment. We'll go ahead and choose a file that we're going to deploy. And it looks like we've been given a v1.0.1 of our application. So let's choose that. And notice in this interface, the version label has automatically picked up the name from our zip file. So that matches the convention I've been using so far. And I'll go ahead and click deploy. We can see the progress through the recent events at the bottom of the screen. And our health status has turned to gray. So this could take another minute or two, as it's a lot faster than the initial deployment. But we'll cut back in once we're back up online. And we're back with our environment being completely updated. Unfortunately, the package we uploaded had a bit of an issue that caused IIS to just not start, but we managed to work around it. We've redeployed. We're currently running version 1.0.1 .1 of our application, and our health status has just turned to green now. So let's go ahead and check the URL and see what our developer changed. And it looks like he's updated it from a shameless template to a TechSnips demo. So we've successfully deployed our web application to AWS using Elastic Beanstalk. Thanks for watching.